Okay, we're going to talk about coronary circulation and answer the what questions, which is what is the coronary circulation? What are coronary arteries? What's meant by coronary dominance? And what role do cardiac veins play? Well, hello, my name is Dr. Morton and I am the noted anatomist. Okay, so first question is what is the coronary circulation and why do we need it? So here we've got a schematic of the heart and we see that blood from the heart that's deoxygenated is pumped uh, to the lungs and the lungs exchanges the uh, carbon dioxide with oxygen and sends oxygenated blood back to the left side of the heart. So blood goes from heart to lungs to heart. That's the pulmonary circuit known as the pulmonary circulation. And we have oxygenated blood that comes from the left ventricle at the aorta to all the system's tissues from head to toe and then gas exchange occurs and deoxygenated blood is brought by veins back to the right side of the heart. And so the tissue, the blood goes from heart to tissues back from the heart. That circuit's called the systemic circulation. Now we've got a picture of the heart, and there's oxygenated blood in the left ventricle, and there's myocardium. And you'd thunk that oxygen would just go into the myocardium like that. Don't say thunk. That's bad grammar. But what we see is that the pressure inside, the, the pressure of the blood in the ventricles and the force and the velocity in which it's flowing, it cannot do this. And plus the myocardium's too thick for all that gas to diffuse in there. So this model doesn't work. What we see is the heart, just like lungs and systemic tissues, needs its own circulatory system. So what is the coronary circulation? Blood pumps from the heart to the heart, back to the heart. Now by heart, we mean the left ventricle through the aorta, and the first branches off the aorta are these left and right coronary arteries that then supply the heart, which is really saying the myocardium and the epicardium. That's what's supplied. Then the deoxygenated blood is brought back to the heart via cardiac veins, specifically into the right atrium. So what is coronary circulation? Blood flows from the heart through coronary arteries to the heart and by cardiac veins back to the heart. The first thing we'll talk about now is coronary arteries. And so here we've got a picture of all the coronary arteries and their function is they supply the myocardium and epicardium of the heart. Myocardium meeting the heart muscle tissue. Coronary arteries are considered end arteries. What do we mean by that? Well, end arteries supply myocardium without sufficient overlap and anastomoses from other coronary arteries. So each one of these coronary arteries is basically an end artery. For example, you see that X, that represents a blockage in that coronary artery. And as a result, all the tissue downstream no longer gets any oxygenated blood. You would think that looking at this area right there, that looks like an anastomotic connection or an overlapping so that blood would be able to go uh, retrogradely and supply that area. But what we find um, in clinical studies is that this does not occur. When that blockage in the artery happens, that whole area downstream suffers from ischemic damage. And this is what is known as then a coronary or a heart attack or a cardiac arrest or a myocardial infarction. All of those mean the same thing. The heart muscle has to have oxygen and because each of its vessels are end arteries, if it gets blocked, the heart suffers um, sometimes fatally. Okay, so they're showing all the arteries labeled in the right side are highlighted because we're going to start with the right coronary artery, that artery there. It, uh, the right coronary artery gets its name uh, for right, uh, the, the abbreviation RCA for right, C for coronary, A for artery. That's where the RCA comes from. It arises from the aorta. Now let's take a look at a superior view of the heart and we're going to take the atria have been removed and there's the anterior surface and that's the right side. In red there's the aorta with the aortic valve and the right cusp of the aortic valve is highlighted and there in black that's where the opening for the right coronary artery arises just superior to that right aortic cusp and that right coronary artery flows in the coronary sulcus along the top of the heart. What does the word coronary mean? Well, it means like a crown. Here's a lateral view of someone's head, and there's a crown sitting on his head, and in green you see that outline. The, the green line represents what crown gets its name from, around the head, just where a crown sits. And so take a look at this right coronary artery, courses in the coronary sulcus along the crown of the heart. So the right coronary artery arises from the aorta, and it courses in the coronary sulcus on the front and along the back. All right. 
Next one is the SA nodal artery. So this artery arises then from the right coronary artery, courses upon the top of the heart, then its artery is deep into the tissue, that's why it's kind of like ghosted in there, and it supplies the SA node, which is located between the superior vena cava and the right atrium, and the SA node, or the pacemaker, initiates conduction system of the heart. Uh, next one is the right marginal artery, that one. So the right marginal artery gets its name because it's right. It comes from the right coronary artery, and it comes from the right side of the heart. Marginal because it courses all along that right margin of the heart. Hey, how about another name for the same artery? Well, because when we look at this, we call it the acute marginal artery, and it gets its name, acute marginal artery, because when you look at that angle between the coronary sulcus and that border of the heart, it forms an acute angle, which is less than 90 degrees, hence right marginal artery and acute marginal artery are synonymous. And then finally, our posterior descending artery, or finally from the right side. There's the posterior descending artery. Uh, it's called PDA for P for posterior, D for descending, A for artery. And this posterior descending artery is called posterior because it's found on the posterior surface of the heart. It's descending because it descends along the back of the heart. And artery because, hey, that's an artery. And now um, we're going to turn the heart around so we see the back side. And there's the right coronary artery. And coming off of that arising is the posterior descending artery. Hey, how about another name for the same artery? Well, along this, we have the interventricular septum. It is a septum of myocardium between the left and right ventricles. And because of that, we also call this artery the posterior interventricular artery. You know what time it is? Time for a wee bit of a tangent. There is something called coronary dominance. Dominance with regards to the coronary circulation means dominance of the coronary arterial system is defined by which artery gives rise to the posterior descending artery, or PDA. So let's do this one more time. Most of the time, the posterior descending artery arises from this right coronary artery, as this illustration shows. And as a result, we say this is a right dominant heart. This happens 60 to 80 percent of the time. So often we don't even talk about right dominant heart because that's the assumption. However, watch this next picture. See that change? A small percent of the time, the PDA arises from the left coronary artery, as this illustration shows. And so we call this a left dominant heart. And then even smaller percent of the time, you notice I raise my voice to show how small of a time it is. That's the inflection my voice meant. A very small percent of the time, the posterior descending artery arises from both right common and left common, uh, right cor uh, coronary and left coronary arteries. This is known as a co-dominant heart. All right, enough of that. Back to the branches off the right coronary artery. So this shows our left and right atria, left and right ventricles. So to talk about that AV nodal artery, let's do a little anatomy review of the heart. That circle represents what's called the crux of the heart. It gets its name because there's our coronary sulcus and there's the interventricular septum. And that forms a T-shaped, also looks like a cross. Crux is cross in Latin. And look at right at that crux, there's a little artery that comes off. And at that crux, that is called the artery to the AV node or the AV nodal artery. That's the nervous tissue that then conducts system, conduction system that takes the uh, depolarization of the heart muscle from the atria down to the ventricles. All right, let's talk about the left coronary artery and its branches now. So the left coronary artery is known as LCA, L for left, C for coronary, A for artery. And it arises from the aorta, and there it is, and it's a very short artery. It courses along the coronary sulcus, it's maybe two centimeters to three centimeters long. That's it. So a superior view of the heart, with the atria removed, there's the anterior surface and the left side. In red, there's the aorta and the aortic valve with the left cusp highlighted. That opening is showing the left coronary artery, and that's how long it is. It then bifurcates after a couple of centimeters into the LAD and the LCX, both of which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So now that we've done the LCA, let's do the LAD. So the LAD is the left anterior descending artery. Left, because it comes off the left coronary artery. Anterior, because it's on the anterior surface of the heart. And we know it's anterior surface because there's the pulmonary trunk and there's the aorta. And descending, because it descends on the front of the heart, like that. 
Well, um, another way we call the left anterior descending is LAD. L for left, A for anterior, D for descending. And so the LAD is how most people will know it by. But hey, how about another name for the same artery because those two are not enough. So there we've got the right ventricle where it would be in this heart and there's where the left ventricle would be located and the myocardium between is called the interventricular septum. And so the this artery on the anterior surface of the interventricular septum is appropriately called the anterior interventricular artery. So three names, left anterior descending artery, anterior interventricular artery, and then the one you'll probably know for the rest of your career, the LAD. All right, so now we've got the LCX, left uh, uh, circumflex artery, and so and the left marginal, its branch. So there's the left circumflex artery highlighted in red. Uh, left, because it comes from the left coronary artery, um, and it's also the left side of the heart. Circumflex, because the word circumflex means curved bending around something else. So watch this. Left circumflex go around the coronary sulcus on all the way on the back side, curved and bending. L for left, C for circumflex, as well as X for circumflex. Uh, let's look at the superior view of the heart. And there we've got that left cusp. There's the left coronary artery. And there's that left coronary, that left circumflex branch that courses all along that left coronary side of the sulcus. And then the left marginal artery that comes down, this artery is named because it's on the left margin of the heart, but it's also called the obtuse marginal artery. It gets its name because the coronary sulcus and that side margin of the heart make an obtuse angle, which is an gr angle greater than 90 degrees, and hence why marginal ar left marginal artery and obtuse marginal artery are synonymous. And there we have all the coronary arteries now uh, coronary arteries labeled. This brings us to our next topic, which are cardiac veins. So the cardiac veins we put up here, the cardiac veins we're going to see in this anterior view of the heart and this posterior inferior view. You see the posterior view in the base of the heart, and in blue are the cardiac veins, the coronary sinus and the great, middle, and small cardiac veins. Let's start first because the great, middle, and small all feed into the coronary sinus. So let's start with the great cardiac vein first. It arises from the apex of the heart and it courses up the anterior surface of the interventricular septum. And then it courses around the coronary sulcus from the front and the coronary sulcus to the back where it dumps its blood into the coronary sinus. Take home message about the great cardiac vein. It parallels the LAD and it drains the same cardiac territory supplied by the left coronary artery. Now what about the middle and small cardiac veins? Well, that middle cardiac vein courses up the posterior surface of the interventricular septum and drains into the coronary sinus. Whereas the small cardiac vein arises from this uh, tissue along the right margin of the heart and then along that coronary sulcus to dump into, yet again, that coronary sinus. Take home message. The middle and small cardiac veins drain the same cardiac territory supplied by the right coronary artery. Here we've got that coronary sinus in this view, but now look at this picture. In the right atrium, we see that opening. That's the coronary sinus, which drains blood into the right atrium. All right. Now, regulation of blood flow in the coronary circulation is primarily controlled by local metabolites. So if the heart then through extra contraction and beating, it then uses more oxygen, it has a slight hypoxic state, that immediately causes um, vasodilation of coronary arterioles to increase blood flow to the myocardium. Adenosine is also a local metabolite that can dilate those coronary arterioles. So there's, it's primarily controlled in that manner. There's a minor role of coronary artery circulation controlled by sympathetics, which vasodilate, and parasympathetics via vagus to vasoconstrict, but those are very minor roles. All right, how about coronary circulation now in a nutshell? Well, oxygenated blood in the left ventricle goes into the aorta and then out the aorta to the right coronary artery that supplies the right side of the heart. And once it goes to the heart tissue, and that PDA determines the coronary dominance, as shown there. Then once the right side of the heart deoxygenated blood is brought back to the coronary sinus via the middle and small cardiac veins, then the left coronary artery is going to supply the left side of the heart, and the great cardiac vein that par parallels the LAD will bring the deoxygenated blood back to the coronary sinus, 
and then to the right atrium. And that's how blood gets from the heart to the heart, back to the heart. And this, my friends, is coronary circulation in a nutshell.